Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you so much for joining the Spiritus Talk series promoted by United States Spiritus Federation every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Today, I'm so delighted to host this talk by Alba Morales, who will be talking about Emmanuel, the story of the spirit that found Jesus. Let's all give Alba Morales a very warm welcome. And before she starts her presentation, please allow me to introduce her. Hi, Alba. Alba Nidia Morales, MS. She has a bachelor's degree in psychology and pedagogy from Universidad Pedagogica Nacional. How's my Spanish? And, a master's, <laughs> and a master's degree in education from Pontificia Universidad Javeriana. Both institutions are from Bogota, Colombia. Alba has been working in education for more than 30 years. She has been involved in different age groups, working with workshops, classes, conferences, etc. And currently, Alba works at a, as a school community and family specialist for Anne Arundel, I don't know how to say this, Anne Arundel County Public Schools in Maryland, and mm -hmm. as an adjunct faculty for the Anne Arundel Community College. Ms. Morales is an active member of the Spirit Society of Baltimore since 2006, almost 20 years. Yes. And she has been coordinating their children in youth spiritist education. I want to ask everyone to take this opportunity to send your questions during the presentations using the chat window. Alba has reserved time to address your comments your questions, and uh, she do so after she concludes her presentations. Alba, the mic is yours. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, Marcia. Hello, everyone. Allow me to share the screen here with the presentation. Okay, I think we are sharing the screen. Here we go. So hello again, and I'm very happy and very honored to be here in this space. And let us go directly to our topic. Emmanuel, the extraordinary story of the spirit who found Jesus. And we're going to disclose that we, we borrow the title from a uh, Portuguese YouTube channel that is called Canal da Filosofia Espírita, Channel of the Spirit is, uh, Philosophy. Um, actually, they have the whole video about Emmanuel, um, different reincarnations. We took information from there and we just love the title because really it's a journey. It's a journey to find Jesus, to find the, the true motive or goal of our lives. We also would like to say that we took information from our research that Geraldo Lemus Neto, Ger Geraldinho, we call him the Spiritist Movement, he uh, got the opportunity to meet Francisco Candido Xavier or Chico, Chico Xavier. Uh, actually, he he was a good friend of Chico for a couple of years. So through Chico, he got to know about some of the uh, stories or reincarnations of Emmanuel, since Emmanuel was Chico's spirit guide or spirit mentor. And then once Chico discarnates, he also communicated, you know, in a mediumistic meeting and gave all this information to Geraldinho and he created a beautiful table in which he, he uh, observes and relates different characters from the books, um, Paul and Stephen, 2000 years ago, 50 years after, renunciation, hail Christ, and we're going to see the books in a minute. So he put all the characters of these books <clears throat> and their reincarnations going from the empire, from the Roman Empire to the first half of the 20th century. 
and it's, it is an amazing job. And actually, if you want to watch this presentation, it's in English. Uh, it's through the Spirit Society of Virginia. You just found it in YouTube. So let us see what was the first um, reincarnation that Emmanuel disclosed to us. But first, we're going to check this quote by Alain Kardec. To be born, to die, to be reborn yet again, and constantly progress, that is the law. So dear friends, the purpose of this presentation is to see the message of hope and consoling message of reincarnation. We can now achieve everything that we need to be a truly a happy spirit, a perfect spirit, as Jesus is asking us, without the blessing we will call of reincarnation. So yes, maybe uh, getting to know Emmanuel's reincarnation is to satisfy our curiosity, because we want to know, okay, what he did before being Emmanuel, and you know, <clears throat> and with Chico, uh, psychographing more than 400 books, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and some other special loving spirits that we have in the Spiritist movement, like Joanna de Angelis or Dr. Becerra de Menezes. We want to know what they were before being this character and this person that we know, right? But the most important part is to see here the journey. So let us see. Emmanuel's journey. So Chico Xavier disclosed to us uh, a reincarnation in the ninth century before Christ. Emmanuel's name is Simas, the great priest of Egypt. And with this specific reincarnation, we see that definitely it was previous reincarnations for Emmanuel to acquire a level of intellectual development and also a level of spiritual development. One of the great things about the ancient Egypt civilization is that they bring with them this notion of the uh, survival of the spirit after death, let us put it that way, that way also communication with the spirits and reincarnation, three very important concepts that, is, that are going to accompany Emmanuel through his different existences. And one other thing that we would like to share with you, you maybe, maybe know the story or not, about the ancient Egypt civilization is that they were coming the spirits, they were coming from outside of planet Earth. And we can find this account in, in a story also that is called the um, Exiliates from Capella. Capella was a star, is a star, very far from planet Earth. And we're talking about more than 2,000 years ago, more, even more. So it was a moment on the star they were inhabitants there, that they were facing the same or similar situations like we are facing right now on planet Earth. We are in a moment of transition. We are moving from a planet of trial and expiations to a planet of regeneration. So that was the situation with Capella. And it was worse, and it was suffering, and it was uh, horrors and things that we are undergoing right now. So the spirit governor of Capella communicates with Jesus, who is our spirit governor, and actually they have a meeting with other high vol of spirits to see if some of these spirits from Capella that were really in, intellectually well developed about science and arts and technology, but morally speaking, they were still in an infancy. 
they were still in need of a lot of progress. So they were thinking if they can take this large group of spirits and bring it to planet Earth to reincarnate. They agreed that this would be wonderful because at the moment we have the very first um, signs of civilizations, not even civilizations, life in our planet is in Africa. And we needed that boots, you know, to get, uh, to impulse progress, to move progress in direction of science, technology, arts, etc. So here we go. We don't know if Emmanuel is coming from Capella or not. So please don't take this information. We don't know. We are just saying that these spirits from Capella brought with them all this knowledge and information to boost the progress of planet Earth. And being the great priests of this nation means a great level, a great development, intellectually speaking and spiritually speaking. So that's how Chico Xavier is going to start this story of Emmanuel's reincarnations, which for us is like a Oh, you put the bar too high <laughs> because I'm just a simple mortal. Let's see what happened in the next reincarnation. So we have uh, here, let me see my here. The next reincarnation after being the great priest of Egypt, he was in Rome as a consul Publius Cornelius Lentulus Sura. He lived between the second to the first century before Christ. And we can find uh, an account of his life in the book um, by, he's the author of the book, it's called Alain de Parnasso, and please forgive me my Brazilian friends for my Portuguese, which means beyond the grave. And this book is not available in English yet, hopefully soon, we'll see. So as a, as a consul in the Rome Empire, he also has a certain influence over the population, but also if we see in the second century before Christ, most of the people of the planet, we were illiterate. We didn't know, we didn't have access to a regular education. So just having the position and the consul means that he was from a wealthy family, from a noble family, and he had the opportunity to, to develop his skills. There is no a lot of mm, situations that uh, Chico Xavier mentioned about Consul Publius Cornelius Lentulus. It's an experience in the Rome, Roman Empire. We don't know how he discarnate, but we see him again in the planet air in our scenario as a senator, which is a higher uh, position. Senator Publius Lentulus Cornelius. We don't even know how, why or how he got a very similar name, but Senator Publius Lentulus Cornelius, we can see how was this character or this person in the book 2,000 years ago by Emmanuel through the mediumship of Francisco Candido Xavier. So he was in the first century and he lived in different places. He was born and grew and was educated in Rome. Then he was sent as a, you know, as a part of the Roman Empire. They have commissions. They send their officials to different places around the globe. Uh, so he was sent to Galilee, and after that, he went to Pompeii. When he was in Galilee, he has the opportunity to get to know, first by hearing comments of his servants, of people around him, about Jesus. And he got curious. He got curious, so he started observing him kind from far. One of the characteristics of Senator Publius Lentulus Cornelius, he was a serious yet affable man um, 
with a very serene presence. And he was very devoted to his family, especially to his wife. And he wrote the most beautiful poems of love to his wife. However, he was suffering in silence because he suspected that his wife was unfaithful to him, even though he never put her under the public eye, he continued loving her. And he truly believed in the philosophy and the ideas of the Roman Empire. He was proud of being a senator, serving his people, his empire. So he hears about this Jesus and he had the opportunity to meet Jesus in person. And they have this very profound conversation and Jesus inviting him to join Jesus, to join him, to follow him. And for a split of a second, Senator Publius Lentulus Cornelius hesitated. It was a moment, really a changing moment in his life. Should I continue serving the Roman Empire or should I follow Jesus serving my fellow human beings? And he decided at the moment he opted to continue serving the Roman Empire. Later on, he disclosed to Chico, centuries after that situation, that he regretted for a long time not to say yes to that call because he could expedite his spiritual evolution and he could have the opportunity to be useful and to serve the people in need, those who are left behind. And we know how much suffering they were on planet Earth at the time. But he was convinced of his principles so he decided to say no to the very master Jesus. And Jesus being the master of our planet, knowing about our difficulties, knowing about our vulnerability, he respect his decision because he know that in time, Emmanuel will be, will be part of his group of followers. So, Senator Publius Lentulus Cornelius decided to send a letter to the, he called to the king. And this letter is a description of Jesus. And please allow us to read it for emphasis as it is a very beautiful description, not only of the physical features of Jesus, but the spiritual ones and how Emmanuel admire Jesus. Emmanuel says, oh, hold on a second because I think, yes, this is this one. Here, finally, is the answer you have been waiting for with so much anxiety. Lately, a man of a strange power appeared in Judea, whose real name is Jesus Christ, but whom the people call the great prophet and his disciples call him the son of God. Every day, great wonders are told of him. He raises the dead, heals of illnesses, and brings all of Jerusalem into amazement with his extraordinary doctrine. He is a tall man with a majestic appearance. His face, at the same time severe and sweet, inspires respect and love in those who see him. His hair is the color of the wine and falls wavy over his shoulders, which is divided in half, in Nazarene style. His forehead, pure and proud, his skin, pale and limpid, his mouth and nose are perfect. The beard is abundant 
and the same color as the hair. The hands, thin and low. The arms of enchanting grace, blue eyes, placid and bright. He is serious, judicious, and sober in his speeches. And he finalized the letter this way. Rebuking and condemning, he is terrifying. Instructing and exhorting, his word is sweet and caressing. No one has seen him laugh, but many have seen him cry. He walks with bare feet and head covered. Seeing him from a distance, there are those who despise him, but in his presence, there is no one, there is no one who does not tremble with deep respect. When they approach him, they say they have received enormous benefits, but they accuse him of being a danger to your majesty because he publicly states that kings and slaves are all equal before God. We stop here just to reflect for a few seconds of how many true accounts we have describing Jesus when he was walking on earth. This is a great opportunity for us to get to know him better and to have an image in our mind. However, we see here that Emmanuel Although admiring Jesus and knowing that he has something superior, spiritually speaking, he was loyal to the majesty, to the king or the emperor of the Roman Empire. And also, this is a letter of, look, this is this great man. This is the man that represents a danger for the Roman Empire. Because remember that Emmanuel decided to be faithful to his people and to the Roman Empire. And something that is very interesting here, the very last sentence, is a danger to the empire because he speaks in public that kings and slaves are all equal. And we see how this idea for him at the moment that the senator is completely mm, out of order. Like it's impossible to conceive this equality between these two different people. How come next reincarnations he is going to change this mentality? And we will see how. He let us go back. Senator uh, Julius Lentulus Cornelius, he discarnate in Pompeii when the Vesuvius, the Vulcan erupts, right? It's very famous. We go to history there in Italy and we see how these all um, the, the bodies, the, the animals and the things, they were petrified. Uh, because of the composition of the lava of this specific volcano. So, Senator discarnates in Pompeii, very weak uh, and ill, talking uh, from the organic point of view. However, at the very last years of his life, he decided to embrace Jesus' message as a, as, a, as a learner and someone that is just starting a journey. And this is important because we know that as spirits, what we take to the spirit realm, what we take when we go back to our true country is all knowledge and everything that we have learned during that lifetime. So he takes this 
even it seems like I saw so very, the very last moment, you're not going to be safe, but we don't believe in that, the spirit is. So he takes that to the spirit realm and he comes back. And he comes back from being a senator of the Roman Empire to being an, a slave. And here we have the slave in the story. He lived in the year 131 after Christ. He was born in Asia. He had uh, the opportunity to go to Egypt, if we call have the opportunity, because being a slave is not many opportunities that you have. But he was in contact with the Egyptian, Egyptian culture. And again, he relearned or he remembered all the teachings from this culture. Remember, there is the life of the spirit, communication with the spirit, reincarnation. And then with his master, they moved to Judea. In Judea, he had the chance to know this group of uh, new Christians, the very first Christians uh, that were uh, communicating Jesus' message from uh, verbally speaking, that's, we want, that's what we want to express. So he got to know the message there when he was in Judea. And let us remember that he is a man that likes to ponder and to reflect. As even as a slave, he had this um, expression of being someone that is serene and noble, approachable, yet serious. He's, this is like a trademark for Emmanuel through his different existences, because it's what is, is the essence of his spirit, is what he is. And then from Judea, he moves to Rome. So he was brought to Rome as a gift, a gift to a family, a Roman family. This Roman family was composed with the father, the mother, and two um, teenage or very young daughters. Nestorio, he became the teacher for the two young ladies. And he uh, taught them not only about the arts and the philosophy, etc., all the knowledge that was needed for a woman at the time, but also he planted on their hearts this seed of inner transformation, the desire for inner transformation, the seed of serving others to be charitable, the seed of seeing all humans as, as equals, no matter the position, because at the end, we are all spirits, children of God. Nestorio was very loved in this uh, household, and we can see his story in the book 50 years later. Nestorio, he um, had a son. Uh, the son became a servant also. And at a certain point in the book or in the story, Nestorio's son get to know one of the daughters of the family. And we found here a love story, which it was a forbidden love story because is between the son of a slave and the daughter of a patrician. Uh, the story in 50 years later is, is really, really beautiful. Uh, the main character, which is Celia, if we are not mistaken, it is a true role model for us in the sense of uh, renouncing to what we have and serving others without a hiding agenda. And this was possible not only because she has the great influence of Nestorio, but because she was a special spirit whose story transcends all the pages of these five books that I mentioned before. So here we have Nestorio. 
as a slave. And that was his life at the moment with the very desire of having a positive influence in people's life. So he discarnate, he discarnate as a martyr because uh, he publicly uh, expressed he was a Christian and he was Jesus follower. So he discarnates as a martyr. After having this reincarnation as Nestorio, then he reincarnates very quick in a very short existence as a, in Rome, again in Rome. So we see same scenarios and the same circle of people. And this is telling us that when we reincarnate, it's very likely like we, are re we reincarnate the same circle of people because we have some depths, some situations that we need to heal and also the places because we are responsible for that land, for that place. We create communities there, we grow there. So we go back to those places. This is true in all reincarnations? No, there is always exceptions. But at least with Emmanuel, you see how the Rome, the empire, the Roman empire, etc., cetera, is, is the common denominator there. So he reincarnated um, as a boy. Uh, he grew up Christian. He was very bright and he was a tall, elegant young boy. And he dies also as a martyr. Uh, tied to a pot at 14 years old. And we were thinking, hmm, why this existence was so short? So if we go to the Spirit's book, we also can find um, the answer for this question. We forgot the number of the question. Please forgive us. Uh, sometimes we have short existences just to conclude what we couldn't conclude in a previous one, not necessarily the previous, previous one. It could be from other former reincarnations. Sometimes this is a, a test, not for us, but for our parents. Just imagine losing uh, a child at a very young age. There are so different explanations of why we have church, a church, um, reincarnation. The thing is, he reincarnates, he lives for 14 years, and he dies as a martyr. So we see that Nestorio dies as a martyr, discarnate. As the young boy, he discarnate as a martyr. And then we move to his next reincarnation. He is again a Roman patrician. So he was a consul, then a senator, and now a patrician. Patrician, And his name is Quinto Barro. And he appears in the year 217 after Christ. And we can see his story in this beautiful, powerful book that is called Hail Christ. So, Again, he has these characteristics of a very noble individual, very serious yet affable, very uh, connected to his family. He was a, a, a family man. He also believes in the Roman Empire again. Uh, however, he has different ideas here because he thinks that although the Roman Empire is like a good form to govern nations, but there is something that is missing there and it's treating people equally, no matter the label. And he believes in this and he expressed this in public which was very dangerous because his colleagues, he didn't like this patrician talking about that slaves, they have the same very human rights that them patricians in a good position with a good life, with good houses and 
wealthy and with access to education and with access to so many other services, they were really in shock. How are you going to tell me that my slave, that is like an object for me to serve, in, to serve me, is having the same rights? So people didn't like this. Queen Tobaro, he decides to do a trip for work. So actually he was heading to France and he decided to do it by, do it by water to the Mediterranean. And it was a conspiration to kill him. Someone got to know about it, someone that is a friend of him and give the word to Quinto Barra and say, hey, be careful because there is a conspiration. And he's okay, I'm going to be attentive. They are in the ship, they are navigating, and in this boat, in this ship, there is this, um, we can call him monk. It is a Christian, a Christian old individual, old guy who is going to the Gallias or France uh, to continue working and spreading the message of Jesus. Um, at the time, we didn't have the Catholic uh, Church already created, so it was this. This guy was like a monk, like a, a preacher, but not with the title. The situation is this old man gets sick during the trip. Queen Tobaro already know about the conspiration. So what he decided to do is interchange clothes with this old gentleman. So he wears this very, the, the rags in which the monk was dressed and gives the monk the very nice, beautiful silky clothes from the Roman patrician. And obviously uh, this was uh, an agreement. The situation was that the, that night the monk uh, passed away, but it looks like, like he was sleeping. So really he passed away and he didn't suffer all the aggression and the violence of being killed. The situation is Quinto Barro arrives to France, to the Galias, with this new identity. And he cannot go back to Rome saying, hey, I am alive, I'm coming back home. He has a wife and he has a son, a son that loves very dear, very, very dear. And his main reason for him in that existence, it was to help his son to find his spiritual way to progress. Because his son, he grew up in this Roman patrician family, uh, accustomed to commodities of being, um, being very comfort, but also he was like a party guy. He was already a young man. Uh, doing all sort of excesses and wasting the money of his father and being the gigolo of the time. And his father was very concerned because he knew this wasn't useful for his son. Actually, it's something that uh, is going to delay his progress. So Quinto Mario this is his concern. He said, now I changed my identity. Now I'm being called Brother Curvino. So how I am going to help my son? However, as Brother Curvino, he decided to do the, the job that this monk, this brother, was about to do. Right, so he goes to the Galias, he needs a community, a small community of Christians there, and he becomes a very respectable figure in the Christian community. And as you see in the picture, they needed uh, to, they, they were 
meeting in, in hiding places as they were persecuted. We're not going to tell you what happened with him, be, between him and his son, but they have an encounter before Brother Corvino passes away uh, as a martyr, again, torture and kill uh, by the Roman Empire because of publicly expressing he's a Christian. But it's a good encounter, and we're going to leave it there because this is a teaser for all of you. If you haven't read the books, please do so. So Brother Corvino, Descarnes as a martyr, is going to be three life, three different lifetimes discarnating as a martyr, which is also interesting, right? How he learned this self-sacrifice for others. Is, is a great moral quality. We don't need to die for others, but there are ways for us to do this self-sacrifice. But let us continue, because there are more reincarnations. We go now to the fifth century. So between the year 217 and the fifth century, definitely he had more reincarnations, but he didn't say what kind of reincarnation or who was him. The other thing that we observe is in like all these reincarnations that we are narrating here, he comes as a, as a man. And we were thinking, hmm, where is this? He, he never did like an internship in a woman's body. Very likely, very possible, however, in each of his reincarnations, he has a purpose and he has a mission. And to accomplish this purpose of this mission, in those times, it was necessary for him to reincarnate as a man, especially for the spreading of the gospel. Because it was dangerous for a woman to do so. And it was also, it was, it was prohibited and no one will listen to a woman. Nobody listened to a woman at that time. She will be crucified or stoned or God knows what. So he needed to be a man. That's why he reincarnates in the body of a man. So this time he reincarnates in France. You see how the last one in 217 was in France and he comes back with the name of Remy or Remigius. And he was a very bright child and very advanced in his academic intellectual skills. So when he is 22 years old, he's already a priest. Uh, uh, he already had a lot of this uh, theological knowledge. But again, one of his trademarks, as we say, is this is this elegant, noble, serene guy who is devoted to the poorest of the poor. And he doesn't care of being like, a, he was like an archbishop. He got into that position, but for him really, this is not important. It was part of being part of the, of the Catholic Church with the Catholic Church uh, played a great deal in the development of the spirituality on planet Earth. That was the way that we got to know about the gospel. So San Remigius, he became a saint in the Catholic Church, is a very loved figure in France. And there is this great cathedral in Remis, the Cathedral of Remis in France. So to say it, he served the poorest of the poor and he used his high position in the Catholic Church to help others and to spread the good news. One of the things that uh, Remigius did at the moment, he, he predict and he say to the uh, people of France, that if they were, if they continue 
growing spiritually, they will see great things in their land. He was predicting the arrival of our beloved Alan Kardec later on. He reincarnates as Father Manuel da Nobrega in Portugal in the 1517. And this is a beloved figure of the Brazilian people, Brazilian friends. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? So Father Manuel da Nobrega, again, with these characteristics that we have been mentioned, he entered the University of Salamanca in Spain when he was 17 years old. And he's coming from a, from a family, a wealthy family that has the means for him to do that because he also showed as an early age that he was a bright boy. He graduated with a doctorate in philosophy and canon law in 1541. He traveled to Brazil to observe and choose the land on which he would later, later found the city of Sao Paulo in January 25th of 1554. He and a group of people, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't only him. And Father Manuel defends the rights and freedom of the indigenous people. So you see how is when he was a Roman um, patricia, he was defending the rights of the slave and servants at the time. Now he seems it's necessary to defend the rights of the indigenous peoples of the Native Americans in Brazil. After, sorry, after his reincarnation as a fa Father Manuel da Nobrega, which is an important, very important reincarnation for him, as he later on as an Emmanuel is coming back as a spirit to Brazil to work with Chico Xavier, right? We are accelerating here. It seems like a time is running out. Then he reincarnates as a father Dam Damiano in Spain in the 1613. And we can see this life in the book, Renunciation, in which Celia from 50 years after comes back in this book as a Alcioni beautiful character. So Father Damiano lived in Avila in Spain. He's enlightened and dedicated priest with noble and balanced character. He fights against the slave traders. Here we go. And he dedicated his entire life to live to his neighbor. He moved to Paris where he acquired a long disease. The, it, is, it was the, the black fever and discarnate. And actually he was in Paris in the time of in which this black fever really killed thousands and thousands of people. Father Damiano is the, the good friend and the, the support, the, the, the guide and the mentor of Alcioni, which is the main character of this book. He was there supporting her in all his troubles, in all the difficult situations that she needed to live. And actually she didn't need to go through these difficulties because uh, a lesson to grow uh, as a person, as a spirit, was because she was there, she reincarnated to actually be with someone, I'm not going to say who, <laughs> but uh, be with someone in need of her help. But we, let us remember that once we are in the flesh, it is hard to be here in planet air. And Father Damiano was her support. From Father Damiano, we move to the most recent reincarnation. Emmanuel reincarnated in the year 2000 somewhere in the countryside of the state of Sao Paulo, Brazil. We don't know if he's a boy or if he's a gay, a uh, girl. What we know is the, the day Emmanuel born again, 
on planet Earth. Chico Xavier, he was, he enters in a trance and his spirit detached from his body and he travels to the place in which the mother was giving birth to this baby and Chico witnessed the, the new entry of Emmanuel to planet Earth. It's been 24 years since then. Chico said that he's not going to disclose in what specific um, part of Brazil uh, this person is, that we will recognize him or her by his or her actions. Chico Xavier changed and uh, shared this information in a very popular TV show in Brazil during the 70s called Pingafor. And he expressed it, that we don't need the information of there's a boy, it's a girl, what is their name, uh, what is the town or the city, because it will be detrimental for his mission. It's like a, a knowing that, I don't know, he's a bright figure. So a lot of us, we will be, will be followers of him even before he is ready or she is ready for his mission. So this is, dear friends, some of the reincarnations of Emmanuel. And we see how he grow from being the great priest of Egypt to Emmanuel, psychographing in, in, a, in a team with Chico Xavier, more than 400 books, books that are blessing us now and that are providing us not only with the, the intellectual knowledge that we need and the, the how to reason about the life of the spirit, but it's bringing this water of comfort for our souls. We want to finish with this affirmation from Emmanuel. He dictated to Chico Xavier in 1949. The work of the gospel continues. The change of names is not important. Above all, the execution of it is what it matters. The flag of the cross proceeds. All around us, there is people who are thirsty for the Savior. This was in 1949. With this, we are going to leave you here. And we are going to see uh, what questions or comments do you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alvo. I love that you had so many reflections on the lives of Emmanuel, right, that you provided to us. But please stay with us for the Q&A session that will start shortly after those announcements. Number one, as you can see on the screen, register today for the 13th Spiritist Federation of Florida Conference. This is an in-person gathering and will be held in Apopka, Florida on the, during the weekend of April 6th and 7th of next month. Um, the second announcement that I would like to bring is that we are uh, really excited about a new virtual course. It's called Introduction to Mediumship and it is here to unlock the mysteries of the spirit world. It is a free virtual course for beginners. And the United States Spirits Federation is just thrilled to invite all of us who are eager to explore the realm of spirit communications according to spiritism. Check out the new course at the learn.spiritist.us, as you can see the link there, or you can go ahead and scan the QR code on the flyer. I'd like to talk about another announcement, which is the podcast-like series, Psychology and Spirituality, A Bridge to a Better Life, based on the works by Joanna DeAngelis. There is a new episode every Friday at 7 p.m., and it's also available on YouTube and Spotify, many different channels. Uh, last but not least, let's talk about this amazing Spiritist app, Be My Hope. It is available now on the App Store or Google Play. 
and it offers uplifting content in a collection of videos, daily messages, and audio materials. Download it now. Let's see if I have any other announcements. Uh, no, we're ready. But before we go to our Q&A, you see that there is a little QR code if you want to help the U.S. Spiritist Federation produce more publications or and or promote spiritism to everyone, please take a moment to scan the QR code on screen for your donation. Let's now start by addressing some of the comments from the audience. And uh, I'd love to hear from you now. So here we are, Alba. The first question that we got is, can you remind us what are the titles of the mediumistic works attributed to Emmanuel through Shiku Xavier's mediumship? I think you mentioned in the beginning, so maybe if you can tell a little bit about uh, what yes. they are. I'm going to mention the, the, the five books <laughs> yes. that were referred in the presentation because mm -hmm. there are more than 400 titles, <laughs> right? So it was Paul and Stephen, mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago, 50 years later, mm -hmm. Hail, Christ, and Renunciation. Yes. So those are historical accounts, right? So it's a, for, yeah, for those of us who like a story or a narrative, this is great for us to, to go in from those many different perspectives. This is, those are beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you have another one. Hi, Yasko. Yasko mm -hmm. Arakawa is saying very good information. Reinforcing a hard journey of a spirit through kind, honorable as the mistakes are made. We have many chances to redeem ourselves. Very true. Question for you, Alba. Interest to see that he incarnated, and you mentioned uh, briefly, mm -hmm. only as man in various social status. Can you speak to it? Yes, as a, as I mentioned in the in the presentation, at least the reincarnations that we know of, and he had certain status, right? It was necessary for him to be a man, because women we are still <laughs> fighting for our rights. But the position of a woman was in the private life, in the intimacy of the home. It wasn't expected from a woman to go to the public square and do a speech, it, it wasn't expected from her and it was prohibited. So for him to be a man, he had, he was allowed to do all these things in the public arena because he was a public speaker. He worked in the public, under the public eye. Yeah. Women were in the intimacy of the home. Yeah, I could say that he, he had a public persona Right, yes. in many different incarnations, but he yes. was able to bring his amazing teachings through those incarnations mm -hmm. as a man. Very good. But thank you, Yasko. I appreciate that uh, question and the comment. We have another one. In his return to earth as a slave, Emmanuel experiences life more humbly, right? Which mm -hmm. demonstrate the law of cause and effect. Can you explain to our audience a little bit about this law of cause and effect what is that <laughs> cause and effect uh, let me use simple words mm -hmm. for every action that we have there is going to be a consequence like a boomerang right yeah so if i'm being a good person if I'm being a charitable person, if I'm a person that loves people, that I'm humble, et cetera, et cetera, this is going to come, come back to me in this existence, in the following existence, doesn't matter, right? And the same when we are, we, we commit errors, it could be conscious and unconscious, when we are mean with people, when we are very, um, jealous and proud and all these things. We send that boomerang and it will return to us. No, it's a punishment, right? It is not a punishment. It is a law. So 
if I push something from here, then I will receive the answer from there to my very own self. I don't know if I, it was a simple, hopefully it's a, a, a clear no, explanation. I, I, I love it. I love it because it really, you know, based on the physical laws, right? Uh, the third, I believe it's the third physical law of uh, Isaac Newton. He talks about this as a force, as an energy that goes contrary uh, to the initial impulse. And there's a reaction. How does it work for us? And I love that you said that it's not a punishment, but it's an opportunity for us to learn. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we seem to learn more from hurtful experience than loving experience. So mm -hmm. a lot of times those are maybe some uh, difficult lessons to learn. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. So we have another one. Uh, what is the lesson, speaking of lessons, right, contained in the account of the exile, exile of several million spirits from Capella to Earth? Okay, that's, that's a story that that's that's a beautiful account, and that's a story from another day. Uh -huh. um, let me start with the following uh, about the lesson. Um, the the these people, these spirits that were exiled from Capella, before they reincarnated, they receive a beautiful, encouraging uh, speech, let us put it that way, from Jesus. Jesus welcomed all of them with a pure heart, with an open arms, encouraging them to go to this primitive planet that was planet Earth, and saying that they will bring so much progress and so much good to our planet and after doing their job and fulfilling their responsibilities, they will be able to go back to their beloved Capella because definitely they, they felt they were exiled and going to a place in which not going to have the same level of um, sci uh, develop, um, science development, etc., cetera, is, is scary. The lesson here is about, or at least for me, it's about the mercy of God. That we all have our chances and our opportunities. And it's up to us. It's about our free will, how mm -hmm. we want to do this spiritual educational journey. Are we going to take shortcuts and then we be exiled from the planet? Or are we going to take the long road, as Jesus expressed it, you know, these lives of sacrifices that we see with, so with Emmanuel, this life of challenges, but being always joyful and knowing that there is hope that our circumstances are temporary and whatever we are going through shall pass. Yes. So the lesson is about the mercy, about the love of God for us. So this will, will, will be happen to planet Air. If it's not happening right now, we don't know. But all the spirits that are rebellious against God's love, loves, they're going to be taken and they're going to a planet that is less evolved than planet Air. So they will have their chance to. So I can just imagine no fax machine, no, <laughs> no, 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 no rotary, rotary phones or no, anything that no, we call no. already obsolete that won't be there. I'm uh -huh. just kidding, but uh, it's no, the idea, I'm, I'm right? That we go back, yeah. And this yeah. happened with the with the capellinos. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> this uh -huh. happened with them coming coming from using iPhone number whatever to. No, even electricity. Yes. No, so yeah, it's that's hard. interesting because we can we can do a little bit of a, a imaginary voyage in our minds. What would it be if we went back twenty years ago, forty years ago, a hundred years ago, so on and so forth? 
from a technology is very easy to do that but how about mm -hmm. our moral evolution right mm -hmm. what are we doing as each one of us as a immortal spirits in our own evolution are we ready for the next step yes <laughs> yeah yeah very good we have another one uh hail christ is such a beautiful story about what true love and solidarity can i guess can do or can mm -hmm. Yeah, what can we learn from the capacity to endure difficulties so that we can transform our souls toward healing and well-being? What can we learn from the capacity to endure difficulties so we can What can we learn? Mm -hmm. Every time we go through an existence Every time that we go through a difficulty, to a moment of sorrow, to a moment in which our strength is tested, yeah. if we are resignated, and let me explain the word because I think in English doesn't mean the same. It has a more we, of a negative yes, but when connotation. Yes, accepting yeah. is accepting God's yeah. will. Yeah. When we accept God, God's will and we go through that difficulty, through, through an illness, it could be our very own on someone else, through a, a, a financial struggle, through losing uh, all of our family members in a catastrophe, God, mm -hmm. God knows, whatever it is, the challenge, mm -hmm. it has the purpose for us to strengthen our moral qualities so we become a better individual and we saw mm -hmm. this with Emmanuel right he was very proud as a Roman senator oh my god he has a lot of pride you know and a lot of prejudice mm -hmm. uh, regarding you know the, the the order of society and through these difficulties, and mo most of the difficulties in these lives, they were, except from the story, they were like the, of the moral one. Because he, when he was the senator uh, Publius Lentulus Cornelius, he was in love with his wife, and he was, was like, a, mm -hmm, whatever, I don't like you. I have to be married with you, but I'm, no, no, it is a pain. So it's, it's to humble ourselves. And therefore, we will be better individuals for ourselves and for our community. I, I love that. I love that idea of uh, uh, we're giving chances and more chances mm -hmm. and yet mm -hmm. more chances to, yes. to grow and to become better as, as unique individuals that we are. Yeah. All right. Alba, can you talk about how as Christians, we can hear our calling to follow Jesus? Well, that's an interesting question because Christians as a followers of Jesus, mm -hmm. not Christians in the sense of the religion because mm -hmm. the religion entails that there are certain dogmas and there are certain even movements like a physical mm -hmm. <laughs> positions. Sure. And there are certain hierarchy that we need to follow and to learn. So I'm going to respond as a Christian as a yeah. following Jesus. Jesus is the governor of planet Earth. Yes. So how? Oh, let us know ourselves. Let us get to know ourselves first. Let us see ourselves as honest as possible in a moral mirror and see how many things we still need to conquer and how many others we are ready to conquer. Mm -hmm. uh, so just to feel this calling is the calling for our betterment calling for our inner transformation. That's that's the call because really what God wants from us is to be happy. And Jesus says, be perfect as my father is perfect. 
we am not going to acquire perfections as God because God is God. <laughs> we <laughs> cannot reach that level, but as perfect as possible. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And, uh, and, and I think it's that lesson to be courageous, right, Alba? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, allow room, allow a space for us to uh, unearth our deep self, which is what connects us to God at, at its the highest core, the, the mm -hmm. deepest core. So mm -hmm. love it. Love it. I think we have one last question before we okay. have to say goodbye. And uh, we ask here, um, we have this question, Jesus communicates God's truth. He teaches love, forgiveness, and loving our neighbor. How does Emmanuel's journey teach us to live a life based on Jesus' teachings? I thank you for such, such a great question. But made me think a lot. But let us say um, one word, and it's the title of one of these five books. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the last one, Renunciation. When we develop the capacity of being willing to renounce, to let go of material things, it doesn't mean that we are going to live under a bridge. It means that we are not attached, that we renounce we, mm -hmm. to our attachments, attachments to things and attachments to people that we easily let go and we go to our, through our life confident, knowing that we are not putting our, our faith and our goals in people and things, that they are helping us in this terrestrial journey. But eventually we will leave everything and we will go to the spirit realm and then Everything it will start again. So it is temporary. So how does Emmanuel's journey teach us to live a life by, based on Jesus' teachings? It is about renunciation and giving the best that we have to others. Because all of us, we have something to give, to share. No matter, no matter what it is, it could be something material, it could be a donation. It could be our time when we volunteer. It could be just listening to someone in need. It could be just a hand to a friend that is in need. We have a lot of things to give, even though sometimes we don't feel like, but we have. Um, I don't know, Marcia, if I answer. I think you did beautifully, beautifully so. and. Uh, because we are at time, I want to say thank you, Alba. Thank you, everyone who is with us, who are watching today's talk live, and those who have been following our weekly Spiritist Talk series. Let's remember next Saturday, March 23rd at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss our next live when Umberto Schubert will be discussing the future of religion. And before we go, I would like to ask you one last question. Alba, would you mind saying a prayer to us? I don't mind at all. And Thank I you. Invite, I invite everyone, just breathe, reaccommodate in your seat. If you're sitting or stop walking, walking, whatever you are, just stop, breathe, and let us all together in one heart, in one mind, Elevate our thoughts to our dearest Master, Jesus. And let us express gratitude for this moment and this time of learning and enlightenment. Let us be grateful for the spiritual company. And let us be grateful for the so many opportunities that we have to become a better individual. May the love of Jesus bless us all and may the love of Jesus give us strength to continue our terrestrial journey. 
and so be it. So be it.